This is the Day More NBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks. Coming at you late Friday night. It's March 8th, and I am here at uh, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse uh, with, with Britt Robson. Again, we're going to do another one of our quick sort of post game uh, recap pods here. Britt, a um, lot to get into in this game. You know, I guess specifically focusing, maybe we could start by focusing on the end of the game. The end of regulation, I thought, were the two real like flashbulb moments right. uh, from this game. Uh, Gobert picking up the sixth foul, which turned into a tech, which turned into a, a point right. um, that you know ended up then being a tie game for the second flashbulb moment when Darius Garland gets switched on to, or Nas Reed gets switched on to Darius Garland. He squares him up and uh, and blocks Darius Garland's shot there in in isolation to. I basically, there was a couple seconds left, but basically send the game uh, to overtime. We you know, we talked to, we'll, we'll talk about what we talked to, to Rudy Gobert about in the, in the locker room. Um, but, you know, Rudy joked, he's like, <laughs> I wish that we would have had one more, <laughs> been up one point right, uh, in that it, situation. Uh, right. So it would have been a block uh, for the win. But yeah, let's uh, let's focus in on, on that part of this right now. What, what stood out to you? Okay, well, I think that... Um the officiating obviously was something that um, was something that was bothering Rudy most of the game, and uh, it came to a head uh, at a crucial time. Where the call was made was not near where the play was made. The fact that it was made by Scott Foster, who was fairly notorious around the NBA uh, among players and people who watch the game closely. Um, he's got a reputation, and so that's always going to be there. Just like if Draymond Green is going off, it's going to be different than if, you know, Rudy right. Gobert goes off. Mm. Everybody's got reputations. Um, I think that the tech itself, uh, Mike Nori called him out on it and said, you know, it, it was unacceptable, and, it, it, and Rudy, after the game, conceded that, you know, that point was – Something that cost the Wolves a game. Some people would argue that, you know, I mean, there were a lot of things that cost the Wolves a game. Mm -hmm. One point, you know, it's a, you went in overtime. So, but I think. Rudy that, did say, quote, you know, cost my team the yeah, game. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. And, and I beg to differ. I mean, <laughs> I, I think that uh, Rudy Gobert was one of the reasons they were in a very close game and, as usual, had a phenomenal defensive game intimidated Jaron Allen many, many times, m made Allen miss a lot mm. of point-blank shots. Nine of 19 for Allen, yeah. a lot of bunnies that Rudy and got And 21 away. free throws was where Gobert began to the, – the refs kind of swallowed their whistles, I thought, for most of uh, three quarters. Throws, and then uh, the all of a sudden – The Wolves took 22 as a team. Yeah, yeah. So there was – there's that discrepancy. And so there's all of that, but um, – what I choose to focus on on this game, I didn't expect them to win this game from the beginning. I thought that they blew their wad last night. Uh, I was I respect as hard as they hung in there. Only one player on the entire roster could hit a three. Um, I thought Darius Garland had a tremendous game. Mm -hmm. He was playing cat and mouse with get. He was getting past people who were guarding him. Jaden McDaniel's in particular. He had a hezzy move today that was exceptional. He's one of the best I've seen him in terms of stop and go and, you know, exploding off the dribble, getting through the first line of defense and then forcing Gobert in particular to choose between coming up to guard him, which is one of his inclinations, and then getting the ball to Jared Allen. Um, that was their bread and butter most of the time, and when Gobert fouled out, that was the game because Garland was still able to do that, except instead of confronting Rudy, he was confronting Slomo or Nas, who neither one has a chance. At you know, it's one on two at that point. Mm -hmm. There are two offensive players that one person has to guard, and Gobert was good enough at it to make it a contested outcome. It wasn't very contested after that, so. That's what I would kind of focus on is, yeah, Rudy made a dumb tech, uh, made a motion with his fingers that would indicate that uh, somebody was getting money for their calls. Um, 
which would indicate corruption, which is obviously what the league. I mean, it, it's it's the worst thing you can do to a ref, and the worst thing you can do in terms of the eyes of the league is basically make it seem as if you're saying the game is fixed or your game is rigged. Because Ru- of and it. again, Rudy said in the locker room when we just talked to him five minutes ago, he he said my reaction was what I truly believe. Yes. Um, so and. This has come up with Scott Foster before and just, I think, officiating really in in the last two years. I think we are at a place where officiating has just gotten chaotic mm-hmm. in, in the NBA. Um, you know, just talking to a handful of people, that is a, a perception, you know, shared around the league, coaches, right. executives. Um, and I think with Scott Foster in particular – the documentary that, that the Tim the Tim Donahue documentary that that came out uh, a year it came out in like the summer before last season and obviously it, it, it the the documentary implicates Scott Foster and it, all of these players are on planes all the time watching Netflix I mean I would be I would assume the majority of the league has watched that that documentary and and i think it has even and like i said i think there's an officiating problem right but but that and the 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 truth that the players take from that documentary has poured gasoline onto an already right problematic fire and and now it's chaos there Mm -hmm. there is there is players in the league who legitimately believe that Scott Foster is corrupt. <laughs> I mean, right. the well, many people with the legit- document I mean, think that, They yeah. legitimately believe it, whether the belief is legitimate. Yeah. Is, is... They legitimately believe it, whether I, yeah, I don't, right, right, yeah, right, I don't right. have an opinion on exactly. that myself, okay. but. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that before that documentary was made in the GM survey, no, it was the player survey. I think it might have been at the Athletic, Sam Amick and a couple of people did it. It was like four or five years ago. They had, le- remember, least popular ref or worst ref or whatever, mm-hmm. and Scott Foster like won that like in a route. It was yeah, like 60% uh, Tony, or something. Uh, what's his name? Tony won, Brothers. Tony Brothers won most popular, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever. But, I mean, Scott Foster, and, and I was ignorant of this. I mean, I know that Scott Foster likes to make the game about himself, as did Kenny Maurer. I mean, there are people, the refs, that do that. But um, I didn't know that Scott Foster was so widely disliked by players around the league. Yeah, and then started you, with the Chris Paul, and now yeah, yeah. Well, that's on. I mean, yeah. to me, I will be honest with you, um, the Chris Paul situation is probably the one that hits the chord on me, like that Scott Foster's got some issues mm-hmm. um, because. <laughs> I mean, the the statistical probability of, you know, like right. Chris Paul being like 0 18 when Scott Foster does games, and Scott Foster very, very obviously doesn't like him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, and and Chris Paul is, is an unlikable guy, and Scott Foster is too. One of the times I tweeted out something that said basically one of the reasons they hate each other is because they are very similar. Mm. I mean, they're sticklers for the rules, they use the rules to justify what they do, you yeah, know? Right. And, and, uh, and if someone else doesn't have that command of the rule book, well, then tough shit, you know? Right. So there's that. But I do think, you know, we're back again at this. Uh, I feel like the refereeing is an ongoing issue that will have to be addressed. The league likes points. The league is very popular. The... Uh, Western Conference race is a fascinating race. It's one of the most intriguing, I think, you know, the, yeah. in terms of, like, there's some legitimately really good dark horses, specifically the Thunder and the Wolves, that have to be taken seriously at this point. There are some – Denver is a legitimate, you know, smart money betting favorite, speaking of money. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the Clippers are, are studded. Uh, the Suns are studded. Uh, the Pelicans seem to go up and down, but if they're up, they can beat any team in a short series. Uh, and then at the bottom in the play-in, 
the crab barrel down there. <laughs> You've got Golden State and the Lakers with all their legacy players and Sacramento and Dallas who have the potential also. I mean, it's it's a phenomenally fun league to contemplate right now. But in the meantime, you've got the situation where offensive players can kind of dictate whistles and the league refs things a certain way. But there's also a great latitude on what to call and when to call it. Um, and when you've got refs with reputations and a – you know, long ago history by now, but it was a, a check. You know, they did have to bounce somebody for throwing games. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 a stew that if – put it this way. I would rather a lot more time be spent on trying to figure out how to make this problem diminish or go away than I would figuring out – you know, play in tournaments. I mean, uh, you know, the in season tournaments. Or oh, something. right, right. From the you know, league. I mean, to have something like if you want people to really be interested in the league, get it to the point where the officiating is less controversial and uh, the rules make more sense. Well, it, it, it's like you know, I, I think about the people listening to this right now and, yeah. you know, are going to predominantly obviously be Wolves fans. Right. And, you know, that, that watch this game. I mean, I, I would think. Of the listeners, right, who are the NBA fans consuming the league's product, right. I think probably over seventy-five percent of them, in their minds, believe that Scott Foster is corrupt, hmm. and that in and of itself isn't good. That that's just like a, that's an issue here, right. like, and that's more gasoline on right. On, right. on on a fire. My my take, and we we can move on. Let's like talk. We could talk about Nas and the basketball yeah. game and all that, but. I, I find, obviously, we know corruption happened 20 years ago. Right. I find it hard to believe that that would be able to get through and really work in today's game. I'm not saying it would be right. impossible. Right. There's definitely sideways to do it, and the proliferation of betting makes it possible. I think with Scott Foster specifically, I think he has narcissistic tendencies, mm -hmm. and I think he has a real, like, sort of, obsession with the attention in those situations he reminds me of what like what happened tonight it reminds me of ant last night like right. a player on a heater right, right. like and, and and he's feeling himself and right. he like wants to assert himself right into the game and that's it that's bad right and and i thought and i, I thought he was i thought he was bad against cleveland t tonight too uh -huh. th throughout throughout the right. game like i thought it was a yeah no it, i agree it got it got chaotic i don't right obviously the, the and, rudy play is is the big one but it's and, and I think at this point I need to say something, which is we are not close to the court. We were closer tonight than we were in Indiana, but and we also have no video. I mean, we have what's on the big screen in the middle, but we're at the game. We're absorbing the information of the game in the arena. And when you watch a game on television or you have access Good point. to you know computer stuff, you're getting all these replays and commentaries from the local guys on, you know, you're getting Cleveland's take on their home feed, you know, the, all the a, league a, a pass bias. feeds. There is yeah. a bias. Yeah, obviously. there's obviously a yeah. bias. But there's also, you get slow motion replays that we, we didn't see a single yeah. slow motion replay tonight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to ask well, that, my what, Twitter what, followers yeah. on one thing, did Rudy really commit a foul? Mm -hmm. It looked like it from where I stood, but that was because out of the corner of my eye, I saw a wrestling, you know, some kind of, something going on there just off the ball, you know? And so, yeah, I thought it looked, it looked funky. And mm -hmm. I, I thought with my peripheral vision, he maybe followed him, but I didn't get a chance to see any replay of right. it. You know, nothing was shown on the screen on that particular one. So we are kind of, when we, when we are trying to report what we see from the game, Actually, the, a lot of the people we're tweeting to and now talking to right. have seen a lot more visual information about what exactly happened mm -hmm. than we did. Yeah, I, one of the players in the locker room after the game, like, asked me what I thought about. That was the first thing right. I, I said, too. I, so I think that's a, a, a good point. You know, we don't have not been able to. That's why I said I can't the say, well, you know, what, yeah. what the second replay I saw, the guy, you know, right. I mean, it looked like this happened. You yeah. Know? I mean, I, I, I said to him, I said, I said what I just said before here, right. which was, you know, there's a, 
you know, a, a level of, you know, bias and the, I, or not bias, uh, attention. Right. You know, I, I, I think that to me, that's the primary factor. And I don't know if it's how to quantify if that's better or worse. Right. But it's problematic to me. I mean, I watch League Pass all the time and I pick this up in a random that I have no care about a Hawks right. Blazers game and I see Scott Foster out there and I think the same things. Right. Right. It's to me it's it's really there's a Scott Foster issue. Yes. And then there's a whole different the 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 overall quality of the officiating in my opinion feels it's down. a extremely hard job and i think the mm -hmm. rule changes have made a, a hard job an impossible job yeah i think the rules really do state if right. you get in somebody's way even as they're coming into you mm -hmm. you know i mean it's offensive players can initiate contact and draw fouls mm -hmm. i mean that's a that's a fact right that's a that's a a change that was unheard of before right you know and so that makes a huge difference and so you know again uh it's unfortunate you know in fact i'm ready in some respects to, to move on to the game because uh <laughs> yeah. we don't well, have what, enough what is there to do I we mean, don't have enough information yeah. but at the same time rudy gobert was incensed mm -hmm. and he said it was not a one call thing it was the straw that broke the camel's back essentially it was what right. he was implying and and then he backed up his gesture with uh he, he minted his opinion and mm -hmm. uh you know it's uh That's so he, wa <laughs> he wants i mean he basically wants he wants people this to know to be that an he issue thinks, yeah. yeah yeah he he made that he made that clear post game that that he believes that, that he stands behind yeah, what he, he did, he, he, even though he doesn't, he didn't enjoy and, and was regretful that it, it was as costly to his team. He said, you know, I may get fined and that, you know, but I want to say, you know, ta da, ta da. So yeah. right, let's grab our first break here. We can move on uh, to the game. Today's show is brought to you by Falling Knife Brewing Company. I know uh, many people were at Falling Knife Wolves fans to watch um, these last two games, the Pacers games. And the, the Cavs game, the Wolves Pacers, <laughs> Wolves Cavs game uh, at Falling Knife in the tap room. Uh, it's kind of like the, the Wolves bar in Minneapolis. Um, obviously, I tell you all about that all the time. But I think particularly um, for kind of the weekend or, or late night games, yeah. it seems particularly fun. And you have two of those late night games coming up with the Lakers and the Clippers here on Sunday and, and Tuesday. Falling Knife does stay open later for those late night games. They're committed to showing Wolves games, which I mean, we've talked about a million times, but I think is a cool thing and a cool thing for this sort of extended community that we are, you know, somewhat mm -hmm. connected yeah. uh, to here. So we always just want to put that on your radar, but particularly for the two uh, LA games, obviously can't go to Target Center to watch them. If you're in Minneapolis, you want to watch with Wolves fans, uh, head over to uh, Falling Knife Brewing Company. And then just quickly, today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks, uh, prizepicks.com or the Prize Picks app. You can uh, use the promo code Dane for a one hundred dollars sign up bonus. It's just a fun way to kind of play fantasy sports um, on a on a day to day or or night to night basis. I think I don't do them myself, but I do look at the, uh -huh. the line, like. But I, honestly, before like Wolves games of you know, oh, so what, what's Garland going to be at this right. or that? And it's it's a. I mean, we were we were talking about this in the car today of like fan, we just you know right. fantasy sports right. And I never got into fantasy basketball. Um, in a big way. I like fantasy football. You like fantasy baseball. Right. Um, but this is just like a fun way to play it for a night. Um, and and I think particularly, you know, maybe uh, tomorrow, Saturday or on, on Sunday, if you're just watching other games, it's a it's a fun way to, you know, have five bucks on, on something and, you know, get a couple picks together, maybe turn your five bucks into 50 bucks uh, or whatever it might be. Um, but that's price picks. Uh, and you can go to prizepicks.com or the Price Picks app. I know many of you are already there, but if you want to try it, do use the promo code Dane for a one hundred dollar sign up bonus. All right, Britt. Um, with Nas, I mean, he's the. This would be had the Wolves won the game. This would be the Nas Reed game. You yeah, know? It exactly. Would, and uh, and deservedly so. I don't know. I just said it like right. that. No, um, well, because I mean, it 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 isn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I mean, they lost like, the game. It remind. Do you remember, like, I think it was his second year, 
against OKC. OKC, yeah. yeah. He played instead of Cat. I think he had like 28 in that game. Yeah, he was something. And, and, he, he's and he missed capable. a shot right at the end of that game, yeah. too. I think that was probably right. his other best game of his career, and it was just like just short um, at the end of the game. The issue was that Nas Reed needed help tonight. Right. I mean, they made eight threes as a team. He made seven of them. Uh, he had, what did he finish with? 30... Four point, he had 34 points. I mean, Amp had 19 on 7 of 27, shooting yeah. 0 of 7 from 3. The team was 1 for 19. 1 for 19, other than Nas. Yeah. From 3. Um, the team shot 5%. They didn't pick him well, up. Well, you know, 1 for 20, I guess it's 5%. So maybe they shot 6%. <laughs> yeah, but, it was terrible. <laughs> and and um, the one was a Jade McDaniels uh, corner 3, and... Uh, um, Early. He, he had four, four yeah. shots. Uh, Conley didn't hit a shot from deep. Mm -hmm. Ant didn't hit a shot from deep. Um, and, you know, it it's easy to connect the dots. Carl Anthony Towns has been out two games, and the Wolves have struggled from distance. Mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards had three of seven in his 44 points the other night. Um but Nas, I, I mean, yeah, Nas, I think, was shut out that uh, last night. And um, Conley was shut out last night. They're hurting for threes. Yeah. And so it's a factor. And it'll be a factor. You know, we spent a lot of the pod last night talking about rotations. And it was nice for Chris Finch talks a good game about flexibility in the rotation. But the actions speak louder than words. And he is somebody who likes to close with his starters and um he likes to keep the rotation locked in as best he can and it reminded me when he said you know well, we have Nas who can do this we have Nah who can do this and we have Slow Mo who can do this and mm -hmm. they're all you know we'll mix and match kind of reminded me of what he was going to mix and match his ninth men with you know, uh, with, uh, shake, shake milk was going to do one thing, and, yeah. and Troy Brown Jr. is going to do another, and J Mac is going to do another. And at the end of the day, no, he wanted to ride one guy until that guy wasn't functional anymore in the way he thought about it, and he was going to go ride another guy. So, what was interesting tonight, and if it was ever going to happen, it probably would have happened tonight, is you could not leave Nas on the bench. You had to play him, mm -hmm. and Micah acknowledged it. And Micah had a pretty good excuse for that. He said, you know, heavy minutes, second end of a back-to-back. Slow-mo had played 35 minutes. That's right up on his mm -hmm. top of the season on the second end of a back-to-back. -back. And he didn't have to say, we cannot generate offense on a consistent basis unless we have people who can make three-pointers. And we only had one of those guys tonight, right. and we weren't going to leave him on the bench. I mean, it's that simple. Well, but th the there were even just times throughout the course of the game where the offense—I mean, the offense was on low power mode the the whole night. It was but, exhausted. Yeah, they were exhausted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, for that reason, clearly, and we'll we'll talk about that. That yeah. was that was certainly a huge factor in tonight's game. But my point was, there was other times throughout the game, not just in the closing five minutes, where all right, the offense is dead, and Micah Nori, who coached for Chris Finch, if you missed this game, who was sick, um, went to Nas earlier. And that's – and I'm just wondering – I wonder when – if you have three options, if you have zero, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to, to fill know in this cat right. thing. I don't know, but I wonder if – if I just watched this game, and it just felt to me – like they haven't figured out their catless identity yet, uh -huh. and which would be totally understandable. Right. And and you know I asked a couple of players about that after the game, and you're pointing to fatigue and next man up and all that that sort of stuff. And maybe that they're is not going to say. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I just think like I don't have an answer for what the the shift is to making the new identity, but. Simply the next man up by committee feels to me a little bit like a half measure. And well, maybe uh, that's all that's available, but I, I don't know. That is just what I felt. Well, tonight. that's not necessarily true. I mean, that's the thing. Why is slow mo the next man up sometimes or all the time, and Nas the next man up under very 
you know, in other words, I I used to be. I mean, if you ask me, last year I was a huge slow mo guy over a Nas guy. I actively was still very skeptical about Nas, although I was finally coming around to some sort of rationality that he was a good player. Uh, slow mo was clearly invaluable to this team last year. This year, there's legitimate cases can be made about when you want to play Nas and when you want to play slow-mo because they are extremely different players and they give you very, very different things. And that was on display tonight and it was also on display last night. Yeah. What I am concerned about is whether or not Finch can break his mold. He's a mold person. Yeah. I mean, he is a guy. It's, it's ironic because one of his molds is freewheeling and being... <laughs> you know, casual with his players in terms of letting them do what they do. But he makes a choice as to when he lets them do it, and he holds to that choice. I think the way to get a post-cat identity is to tinker with it. And I think the only way you can tinker with it is if you give people roles that they haven't had yet. And the only way to do that is to mess with your rotations. Which and so, therefore... You've got to mess with your rotations. And if you're not going to do that, then you better use the three-day span between the L.A. games and the Utah games mm -hmm. to really drill down, develop a thick scouting report book on your own team and how you think that team would be and should be defended and how you think, therefore, mm -hmm. that team should counter those types of defenses and start to game play how you emerge not only with an identity but with a couple of viable options. I mean, Finch was always happy to say, we've got a lot of depth on this team. We have options. And he has been able to use the second unit in that way. But that's because it's the second unit, and all he's basically doing is um, – just reducing a little bit of time for his starters. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be something more significant. This is going to be, no, tonight Nas is the better guy to be in the starting lineup because the op opponents, you know, are, they don't have anybody who can match up with Nas. Um, or another night it may be that uh, they're, you know, if they're playing New Orleans, I want slow mo in the game for Zion. Mm hmm. You know, um, I don't want Rudy on Zion. That's foul trouble waiting to happen. Cat is no longer available, so Rudy can lurk. Slow-mo is your best option unless you want to put Ant or Jaden on Zion, and that's foul trouble too. So there are certain times when slow-mo certainly makes the most sense and can be in that starter mode where uh, you may be even finishing with him. But there are also times when Nas is the guy, and there may be times when if teams are going to go super small and they're a small team anyway, where Nah is, you know, you push Jaden into the four and you play, you know. Which we haven't seen that. No, yeah. we haven't seen it, but it is an option. So I think about this, like the even to them, the cat thing kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, let's get this looked at. Need doesn't, you know, feel right. I don't think they – I don't think when it got looked at that – there was the expectation that there right. was going to be this. And credit to Cat. I mean, if, if yeah. in fact, I mean, if there's a meniscus tear, that's no mean feat. That's sure. a, that's a hard, and he was playing through it. I mm -hmm. mean, for all, yes, we sometimes talk about Cat's dramatics. Cat underplayed this. Sure. Underplayed it to hell. Um, the, the thing I was going to say, though, is like they haven't really had time to dig in and, right. and think about Absolutely. all of these, that's these right. plans and counter plans. And but will they? I that I that I don't know, but I think it's worth pointing out that the yeah, you're right. the, the, the cat information comes Thursday Absolutely. morning. They play the they Pacers game certainly Thursday be, night. Be forgiven for not having a yes. plan B when they didn't know they needed a plan B mm -hmm. just recently. Yeah, and I and think, then in the middle of a back to back on the road after their fourth back to back since the All Star break, which yeah. was less than a month ago. They they, I think that's the point. Is they and it's kind of what you were saying, just in a different way. Is there needs to be like alternative plans or there, there needs to be a plan a plan b plan c plan d and i think it's important to nail down what the 
top one is. And I think that's probably tied to what who uh, starts. See, I think what's important isn't so much what the top one is, but why a plan would work, why you would develop that type of plan. Because yeah. I think it needs to be somewhat opposition-related. I think it has to be how you match up. I know that Finch likes to be bully ball or bust against anybody, but you're That's lost so one of your bullies, you know. Yeah, so right. uh, I think you need to go with your, your best option for winning. You've got 18 games left, and it's an extremely tight race. Figure out when. These guys will work. And you may not be right, but that's what happens every game. Right. But then you at least are able to communicate something tangible to players. And um, as it turned out, Rudy fouled out. Slow-mo did not end the game on the bench the last three minutes. He wound up playing next to Nas, and both were getting decimated by Garland and Allen because Rudy Gobert is the best at playing that one-on-two cat-and-mouse game that Garland was playing with him. But at the end of the day, we would have been talking about it's really a shame that the Wolves are so inflexible that they won't put Nas Reed in the game in the last five minutes when he's hit seven of their eight three-pointers and they desperately need offense. So we, that at least was done, and that it means that there's some common sense that's at work here. I, we, we talked about this a little bit last night when we were talking about the offense and defense and the backfilling. I think I was saying that backfilling yeah. idea of like, Okay, it's not just about who goes into the starting lineup to replace Cat. It's who then replaces that Nas or Kyle in the, the bench yep. in that yep. sort of way. So I think that's an important part of this calculus mm -hmm. that when we're talking about making that plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D is is figuring those elements out of, right. okay, maybe Nas is your best starting option right. at the four, but does that lead to a worse backfill option behind him right because now it's slow-mo coming off did you need juice off? i mean there's a whole bunch of different ways you you could look at that but i do think there's layers well here's this. an interesting clue shoot tj warren was signed 48 hours ago or 72 hours ago and is in the rotation that's you yeah. know i mean he he didn't get the third rotation but he got the first two he got a rotation in each half three for three tonight and and at one point he was plus eighteen in his first two ro you know rotation and a half, and he played really well. He his shot selection was really good. His return and rotation and recovery on defense was actually surprisingly adept. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't hurt to have Gobert next to you. He was on the floor a lot with Gobert, uh, which makes total sense to me. The eraser of mistakes on defense. Um, but he looks like he's he's a veteran. Finch already trusts him as an offensive force, which is if you get that from Finch, you're you know you're selling your first encyclopedia, <laughs> and uh, you know you essentially he's going to be in the rotation. He's going to be a guy that's going to be in the rotation. It seems like it. He's he, he's thus far kind of been like he's on. He's when the ant. He's on. the anti ant. Yeah, right? which I I. I guess wouldn't have guessed that, but I now seeing it, you're like, okay, there's some offense, like that's an offensive burst when you're taking out your biggest offensive. Player. He has been a guy who can get you 20. And if you think about it, who else on this roster is a guy who can get you 20? Mike Conley, if Mike Conley is freed off the ball, but you need Conley on the ball and you need him to make decisions. Um, I don't know if I'm willing to give Warren a he's a guy who can give you 20. Though. Well, no, what I'm saying is he has been a guy who can get you 20. Yeah, okay. and <laughs> you don't have to get 20. You have to get a 20-point score in that rule. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying is he won't get 20 because he won't get the minutes. Yeah. But he'll he'll score, like per 36, he may wind up getting 16 points or 14 points. If he's if he's on, I mean, right. you know, tonight he got. Well, like, I guess he had what he had seven last night and six tonight. Yeah, so about you know, twenty five thirty minutes. But at the end of the day, the point I'm making in terms of we're looking for tea leaves. Well, one of you know when you've tilted the cup, one of the arrays of tea leaves is the one left by the fact that they have immediately incorporated this type of player into the roster, which means they recognize they need shooting and they need shooting 
that doesn't have to be incredibly enabled by everybody else. And and there's a veteran trust. Right. That, that's T.J. A- Warren can get a bucket. We've seen it happen already, and he's rusty, you mm-hmm. know? So uh, you're right. It, it, it's, I mean that in, like, comparison. I mean, people, you know, are looking at, oh, you know, how is – how is he in here, you know, to, after being on the street and getting, you know, over Minot and Miller and those sort of things? I oh, think that's it's, very easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't throw kids into the middle of a historic mm. season where, uh, you know, if you don't make the playoffs. That seems to pretty clearly be Finch's stance. On it. You, I'm, I'm saying Josh like, and, that's yeah, your Josh Minot and, and Miller are not ready for playoff down the stretch. Down the stretch, get your seed together. Basketball. Warren has been on teams. He's been through that, mm-hmm. and and you know, not necessarily successfully. He hasn't been like a, one of the top three guys on a team that went deep in the playoffs. But he's been around for those kinds of games, and he, he you know. He's also in a position to do exactly what he's told and also know what he is being told, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, you could tell Minot what you want him to do and whether or not he is actually able to do it because he can tamp down what he thinks he should do and be able to do what they want him to do, you know, in the teeth of an, an NBA season. Those are, you know, that's that's different. So, yeah, I... I I think that the T.J. Warren, not only the T.J. Warren 10-day signing, but the T.J. Warren embrace uh, indicates to me that Nas is in a good position because they they know, um, first of all, Finch appreciates shooters and he appreciates quick thinkers. That actually turns out to be another thing T.J. Warren seemed to be doing pretty well tonight, getting off the ball when he needed to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Um, I think that I think that Finch is going to be a little more flexible than he has been in the past, and I think there are going to be times. I think if Finch was on the sideline tonight, there's a. a I think it is better than a fifty-fifty chance he would have put Nas in. I don't think it would have been as automatic as having Micah because I think Finch really likes slow mo and has a belief in him that. Um, is greater than most people's, and he's the coach, so he gets to try that, you know. And he has, and it's worked worked fabulously last year. This year, there's problems, but he's stuck with slow-mo, and slow-mo was bad, literally bad, and slow-mo's gotten better, and Finch has been at least partially vindicated by that. Even so, slow-mo can make plays for others, um, he is being scouted again. You can see that that dipsy doodle spinning stuff in the lane where he keeps his pivot foot, but everything else is moving around, um, <laughs> is being sussed. And it's not as easy, you know, for him right now. And, and, and they are also, when I talked to Mike Conley after tonight's game, you were talking about, uh, I asked him what the difference is in the time Cat's been gone, and he said that defenses are pressing up on him and Cat more, and you can see it. Ant, yeah. Yeah. Him yeah I'm Ant. sorry, Ant, yeah. sorry. Yeah, they're pressing up, and I mean, they're the two per- guys in the starting backcourt, and they're getting they're oh, getting pressured more, yeah. and doubled, you know. And you can tell Conley is more hamstrung by that, and Ant clearly is too. I mean, Ant really has to work. He really had to work tonight, and he – did just literally didn't have the energy and Conley is facing uh you know Conley is old and Conley is getting treated like he's 26 he's not you know he's the the valves of cat and ant and rudy aren't being aren't removing that pressure from him as much anymore mm-hmm. one of those valves is shut off cat is no longer there to take that pressure away so it's a learning experience for everybody. The good news is this team, the last time they were this exhausted, they went into Phoenix and just laid an egg. They just died right there on the court and got wiped off the court. And they didn't get wiped off the court. Now, 
Cleveland minus three starters, and there's all kinds of reasons why Cleveland might have struggled. But I've been extremely impressed with the resilience of the Wolves in these past two games. To split the series, you know, these two games on the road has been I, – I would have taken it beforehand. I'd especially taken it now given how much Monty Morris is hurt now. You know, J-Mac was out an illness that apparently Finch now has. I mean, there's – as you noted in the, some of your post game questioning, there's there's illness, there's fatigue, there's the you know four yeah. back. Let me, to let, me let me grab let me grab another break before okay. we we're, before we jump into the fatigue topic because I think it's a it's a real one. Uh, we'll be back with Britt here in a minute. All right, uh, back with Britt Robson. Britt, uh, the this is an interesting episode. There, these are two topics I usually just don't really touch because I think they all kind of come out in the wash refereeing and back-to-back related fatigue. And you know, there are they easy get, answers for both of them. Like everybody has it, you know, everybody you has got it. Illnesses. You got to, you got to do your everybody has out. illnesses. Everybody has referee issues. You yeah. Know. Right. And, and, and I, 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 again, that's my, my typical stance. I think as I sit here right here today, this is as, what happened with the refs tonight and then what is happening with the fatigue factor feels unique mm-hmm. to to the level that I think it is a, a worthwhile topic to really be considering in the greater context of of what is going on with this team right now, particularly given, you know, the injury to Cat. And I'm trying to figure out how to properly contextualize uh-huh. you know the fatigue here. And and it is such a a unique situation. This is their fourth Back to back set, eight games. Right. Um, since the All Star break, that that they have that they have done that 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 is unique. You have an illness going through the team. You know, Finch is you know, Finch didn't wasn't even right. able to to be you know there there tonight. And I don't know. I mean, for me, and I've been doing this a lot less, <laughs> a lot shorter than than you have. Uh, the only thing I could compare it to is COVID. Mm. And 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 just the, the the impact of you know missing players right. in that sort of way and the the real prolific impact illness and related fatigue you know is having on a team it it th- this seems pretty profound right now in this moment and then exacerbated by Cat's absence yeah well one of the whenever you have something become what was a mundane problem for everybody, become a specific problem for one team, there's usually two or three minimum and sometimes three or four factors that make a difference. Mm -hmm. The cat injury, the schedule in terms of the back-to-back are two factors. The fact that you made a trading deadline trade for Monty Morris and we're integrating him and now he's hurt. Finch said day to day on that. It's a hamstring. Right. We'll but see. again, I mean, this is the kind of thing where Monty Morris, they were beginning to experiment with having him on the floor with Conley and then also having him at the point and when J Mac may or may not be used as a result, but they were working through a process of figuring out where Monty Mars figures in the rotation, what roles there would be. And so all of a sudden that's on hold for a couple. And all that information you had before, a, a lot of it you had with Cat on the floor. Right. So they're trying to recalibrate new information and they're trying to do it not only with Cat gone, but now Monty Morris gone or whatever. And then another factor that I think is one of the most important factors is that this last month that is coming up has enormous stakes for the future of this franchise, how it's viewed, how much money is going to go into it, and what kind of people are going to be allowed to stay or leave going forward, whether they can keep their bets on an enormously expensive prospect or whether that would be foolhardy. These are decisions that everybody kind of knows are going to be determined by the events that unfold. And 
there may, yeah, there may be an excuse. Yeah, well, Cat was injured. That was the excuse they had last year. But now the stakes are higher because you've seen, you've got the level of accomplishment that you've seen, but you also now have, because of that level of accomplishment, this desire to spend even more and have those stakes, you know, to you've just paid Jaden, you just paid Ant, and if you're going to keep slow mo, are you? I mean, how boy, that's another thing, you know. And he's he, the doors open right. for him. So I mean, those so many things. sliding door things. Yeah. And you know, you've got a situation that if you if this team gets into the conference finals, it will be tied for the best position. The franchise has ever had. It was started in the late eighties. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, they want to make it work, and and they will. And, and the COVID during COVID, there was some interesting things going on with this team, and and things were working out to some extent. They were you could see the improvement, um, but the 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 sky wasn't the limit, you know. And now, if you know. If you go into this uh, playoffs playing a play-in team um, and then you get to host a second round, you know, uh, that's that's a level of achievement. You have done what Tim Connolly sat in front of us the first thing almost out of his mouth. Media day, yeah. When we started that whole thing, well, at the very least, I think we need to win a playoff series. He just came right out and laid it on the line. And so here we are. That's exactly where they are. They they are in a position to expect to win a playoff series. But now there are clouds. And so the decisions that have to be made are be having to be made in flux. Yeah. So again they, they are normal clouds though. Yeah. Like relatively the Wolves exactly. have had a had a, had a healthy Mitchell's season. Mitchell's out for the Cavs. Yeah. Right now. You right. know, no, and I, and I don't like my whole thing, and I, I have a problem with the cut and dry. If they get lose in the first round, you have to blow it up. If it's a yeah, second yeah, round, right, you know, right. maybe. Yeah, yeah. And then if it's, if it's the conference finals, then run it back. Like, right. That's not how my brain works mm -hmm. on, on this stuff. And my hope, and I've said this before, is that there is a huge process. There's a process mm -hmm. that goes in into all of the, this that contextualizes everything, including what's happening right now. Exactly. Like this, whatever is happening in the success or f failures that they have in this time, given that cat's out and given the crazy schedule of it all, that should be considered. Yep. Because if cat being out and the schedule drives them down to the four seed rather than the one seed, which seems like a legitimate possibility. Yep. Um, you know, that's a very different then you opponent. Lose your home court in the second round. Yeah, it, it, it's so it's just I don't know. I I would, and everybody can obviously think whatever they think, but how I'm going to think about it when we're you know, you have that walk home after the season ends and yeah. you actually start thinking about it, I'm going to push myself to not think about it in any sort of black and white terms of right. of this is that and this is that because and i don't th I, I i think this front office to the degree that i understand it will they will uh, uh, apply a process there is external pressures perception matters and keeping teams together and all that and then obviously what your ownership ultimately thinks and feels about the situation is is going to influence it as well but as much as tim conley and his cohorts can do I think this all requires a super sober analysis. And and even in even if it was great, and even if it was you know, you did get to the second round. I mean, right. you swept somebody in the first like it it just I don't think it should be results oriented for better or or for worse. All factors uh can and and, and should be considered. Well, the results obviously I think need to be the biggest factor, but it doesn't have to be results oriented. Yep. I I I think that that fine distinction can be made. And also, my point is that that lingering uh, context will have an impact on how they react 
whether it's in that three-day period after the L.A. games before Utah, whether it is um, whether or not to re-sign T.J. Warren for another 10 days or for the rest of the season. Sure. I mean, you are now beginning to say, well, if we are thinking we need that first seed, hmm. you know, I mean, that's part of the process. You know, do we want to go for it or do we think, hey, we might get cat back in the first round of the playoffs and, you know, that may be that. I mean, there's all those moving pieces that we're not going to be privy to, that the ownership is going to have to deal with the general manager and the general man, Pobo, and the Pobo is going to have to deal with the coaching staff, et cetera, et cetera. That's what makes this particular juncture so fuzzy anyway. There's static. There's noise in the system right now because of the injuries and the fatigue and the suddenness of Cat being out. Um and the possibility of Rudy getting suspended, you know, or whatever. But again, what you're getting there is some of the normal ebb and flow that obviously happens. But in this case, the normal ebb and flow is happening in abnormal times. It's just it's this representation that winning is really hard, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and, and I mean that in a good way. Yeah. Like it, it, it just it is yep. like winning through chaos is a major, major accomplishment and very few teams do it. Right. You know, and, and it is this team's test right now, stress testing themselves against adversity. Right. And, um, I actually think like mentally they're in a, in a pretty good place. Like they collectively absolutely are. as a group, right? Like Finch was talking about pregame, which is where he did his pregame media with us. And then did, 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 <laughs> did do the over. game. But one thing he said that just stood out to me was like this team really likes each other, and and Finch and that's isn't, a fact. Yeah, and he isn't. I was gonna say he's not a BSer in in, and also in that we way. We see it. I mean, what, yeah. we've been in. Uh, it's interesting being in in visiting locker rooms because the the it's like anybody on the road that you see you mm -hmm. think is more part of the team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I mean, we are definitely regarded as more friendly people. Because we're in, you know, because we're traveling with the team. You're putting up with the same bus rides and et cetera. You do get a sense of uh, right. connectivity when you're on the road with the team that mm -hmm. you might not get otherwise if you're just. I mean, as somebody who covers 95% of what I've ever covered on the Wolves has been at home. So I notice the difference yeah. when I go into a visitor's locker room and people see me and they, you know, they go, okay, well, this guy, you know, right. is a little deeper into the beat right now, you know. Mm -hmm. Which is one of, the, frankly, one of the reasons I do it every now and then. But you get, they allow you to see. You see what the Some interactions are. You see yeah. Ant walk up to Rudy, who got tossed, and cost the team the game or whatever, yeah. and gave me old seventy-five variation handshake that they do or whatever, and just Chest you could, at the end. and just basically they both do a little Ur! at the yeah. end of it. <laughs> but there, I mean. We were talking about Ken Ant and, Wir and Rudy work together yeah, on the man. court, right. and right. we remember Ant not thinking Ant's not the. I mean, well, that Rudy's is not where the most belief, intimidating guy. That's you know? where the belief in this team comes from. Exactly. The, or my, my personal one is it's up because so many of the on court chemistry issues fit. You know, Cat at the four. Right. Ant used to never be able to pass to Rudy. Right. All these things my perception of how those things will work on the floor changes seeing the way in which those relationships yes grow on a one to one basis and and collectively and it's shown up on the floor cat at the four working a hell of a lot better this right. year ant and rudy and cat and rudy game. kind of yeah. giving each other grief in the locker room yeah. or you know an ant basically called rudy rudy yeah. and you know <laughs> and it, it, it all goes back to the like the, the idea of the being able to face adversity. It, what I, well, why why we brought this up was right. that a, a connected group and a group that does have some veteran leadership right. in there. Some they right. do have stress tested guys. We call it a young team all the time. I think that is still true. Right. But they also have experienced right. players um, as as well. And that there's always the young factor, and you like that always gets really strained uh -huh. when adversity does hit but the collective whatever of the group connectivity 
on this team and seven years of covering the team is different than I've seen before. That gives me right. more faith in it. Um, some stability in the coaching staff, some stability in the veterans in the locker room. Like, it would really surprise me if this team folded. In, Imploded, right. You know, like, and, and even for a couple of weeks, because that they, they, they just, right. as much as anything has been in their identity this season, it has been, you know, goldfish. Never lost two, more than the, two games in a row. Yeah. All year. So, I mean, that's going to get pushed, and maybe they will uh -huh. lose, have a three-game sure. losing streak. At, at some point here, and that will probably, again, let's apply process and right. context to that right. of the, the schedule that they're on. I mean, it's the six-game road trip that they're on, right? Four back-to-backs. Now it's a six-game road trip or four games yep. left of it. Yep. And then, okay, we finished the six-game road trip. Boom, back-to-back -back against Denver. Right. You know, immediately the night after Utah, they have to go across the country back to right. Minneapolis to play Denver there. So it's... It's going to be tough. And then five out of six at home. And yeah. then you're in the stretch run. By that point, you're, right. you're within single digits in how many games are left. Yeah. And so, you know, again, things will happen quickly, and decisions will have to be made and recalibrated quickly. And that's going to be – it's going to be a ride. You know, I yeah. mean, it's going to be oh, – This uh, is fun, too. What we have seen thus far – One, let, let's – the way I would recap what I've seen these last two nights is the Timberwolves don't look like they have any intention of using excuses or going away. They firmly believe that they can weather this, that they acknowledge Cat is a big loss, but nobody is thinking this is really going to hurt us. Mm -hmm. That's not the mindset. The mindset is... This is certainly something that is recoverable and, yeah. you know. Uh, and that was evidently clear in the Pacers game. You didn't have to be in Indiana to see it, that. Yep. I mean, that was that was my main takeaway from that yep. game was it was a mission statement of the season's not over. Right. Because Cat's out and credit to Ant, the leader, the best player right. on the team. Obviously, his play reflected that. And this team and many teams in the NBA take form – from the outline of their right. best player. I actually am going to be curious to see how they play against lesser teams, whether they are going to be able to keep being rigorous mm. um, because they, you know, it it's, it's going to be, they shoot themselves in the foot on offense with silly offense, stupid offense, and now they literally don't have that margin for error. They do not – they cannot drive one into three. And we're not seeing that as much, mm -hmm. I'll tell you. I don't think that's right. that's being happening. But Mike Conley has to start hitting shots. Right. And, you know, Nas has to become a little bit more consistent and get a little more rope to show that he can yeah. fill some of that cat void – and when slow mo was on he the can. court, he can. Yeah, I would Not, think so. No, but you know, he well, I mean, you know, we it made seven threes. Yeah, no, I it, I know, but um, it, it he has to fulfill. We think that he can replace a guy who is an all star in this league, and it's possible that he can, but he has to do it. That all star. Carl yeah. Anthony Towns yep. is given the leash and deservedly so yep. to play through his own internal adversity, Absolutely. foul yep. trouble, whatever right. it is right. at, at right. different times. He always has right. the same length leash. Right. And Nas's role on this team has not been has not has the, the leash has always had a predetermined yep. limit. And I don't know, we said the options A, B, and C. I think one of those options need to have no leash on Nas. Yep, I and agree. Like, let's go. Like, yep. let, let's let's see it. Right. And and like, what can it be? I mean, he doesn't even tonight. What did he play? Like, I mean, went to overtime and he still played thirty-two minutes. Right. Right. You know, like, I just I my gut tells me that by committee is is going to be a half measure and and that it is not going to deliver what is necessary to keep themselves up in the 
the top of the Western Conference. Uh-huh. I, I, that that is my opinion on it, and I don't know that the unleashing Nas or the other options get you there. They have more of a ceiling. I I, I feel, mm-hmm. in my opinion, the committee is a little bit more of a conservative path, and oftentimes that is the wiser one, and that very well could could prove to be true. I might be caught in lost in the fatigue factors and all of this, but I don't know. I'm kind of just in team, like, let's cut Nas loose and let's believe that we've always called him a poor man's cat. Like, right. let's give him some money, <laughs> you know, like, let's, 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 right. let, well, let's and, let him and, build. And if he can avoid playing the five, uh, I mean, one of the problems, of course, yes. is yeah. that cat was able to play next to Nas. And if Nas, Nas is going to be the new Nas cat, isn't a five. Yeah, but if, what what I'm saying though, if Cat is going to be able, if if Nas is going to be able to play, he yeah, doesn't yeah, have yeah, a Cat yeah. anymore. See? Yeah, I guess I'm thinking of the yeah, in the starting lineup. Which you're right. There, there's <laughs> there's a, there's a lot to go to it, and, and maybe that is just if there, you are Nas, like you got to be like, hey, when you are at the five here, like lock in, because right. this is where the issues are going to come. If they're going to give you the Cat role, like you're right, that's part of it, and like and that's you got to do you it. know the defense. He's proven himself to be a, actually a better three slash four well, on defense. You know how they matched up Cat. in overtime, right? You yep. saw that they yep. put slow mo on exactly. on Jared Allen and, and, and having Nas chase freaking Darius Garland yep. and Isaac yep. Okoro yep. and yep. guys like that. You know, so smart moves again. And, and maybe that can, that's a maybe that gets that's to a continue tweet. exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that and that's how you do satisfy mm-hmm. the slow mo fix. Right. You know. Yeah. Well. We've uh, we've spent a lot of time talking to each other today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We had spent four hours in the car. We did. We did. Uh, or maybe no, five. This this was awesome. I, honestly, two. Really, uh, I'm glad I went on this trip. Um, just from I the, the thoroughly basketball. enjoyed both games. Yeah, and- I I actually thought that uh, I I suspected that they would adjust and be enjoyable without cat. Um, I did not think necessarily that they would be able to have the fiber to beat one team on the road and nearly beat another team mm. on the road, come into overtime and be just a few missed opportunities away. Um, I Do think, think it speaks well. Having this the, like the last twenty minutes part of this, where we're like, oh, you know, how are they gonna? Fair, like we've we've thrown a little bit of skepticism on all of this. If they would have won this game, do you think we're saying the same thing? No, but yeah. then again, that's what these <laughs> that's it's because each one of those games. I mean, it, it was five percent of the rest of the season. Now it's like eight percent of the rest of the season. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're talking about consequential damn games. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about the fact that if you don't win this game, all right. What's your division record now? What's your record against the team you just played? Right. What if you guys tie? Right. I mean, you know, these are you know these are the types of games where I'm I don't know if Oklahoma City beat Miami tonight. It was nip and tuck, but that's a that that's almost as important as yeah. some of the other stuff we're talking about in terms of Oklahoma how things City are going to happen, huh? Oklahoma yeah. City pulled it out. Yeah, yeah. one hundred seven, one hundred. Yeah, no, it's. Just to answer that question that I posed to you, I, I think there would still be some of these questions, even if they would have won this game. Right. Like, we would have looked at it and been like, man, Ant in Indiana, Nas, Nas in Cleveland. I think then when, if we would have taken a breath. And the defense. They yeah, had they, a, just a lock down. And yeah. you know what? I expected that. Because Cat is the weak link in that starting five on defense. Yeah. And so you put in My point mode. was is there's still things, I think, underneath – yeah, in this game, and maybe it's just fatigue. But there were other things right. from these two games that you know you go. Well, they did need a Herculean effort from Ant and a an Herculean effort from Nas to win again. If they would have won in that situation, so I don't know. Maybe it is just one of those situations where we need a little bit more information, just like Finch we're talking about, and the coaching staff needs a little bit more time to kind of glue this all back together. Well, I mean it. Literally four days from now, we'll be saying, "Is Mike Conley broken?" Or remember when Conley had yeah. those last four or five games where he just sucked, and now he's he's back. Yeah, the hits you know, like what I mean, but I mean that that, that that's yeah. in the balance. You yeah. know, yeah. if Mike Conley has four or five more games like he's had the past four or five, then Mike Conley's broken for a while. Right. You know, and that's a huge factor. Yeah. Well, um, 
this was fun. I'm glad we did this trip, these two pods. Uh, next up will be, I am not going to LA or Utah for these next, these final four games uh, of the trip, but Chris Hine is going to be there for the game um, on Sunday. And, and me and Chris will, will talk about that on Monday morning um, at, at some time that'll be next up. And I do think Britt, this is, this is like, it is every game, like kind of got to watch it now, even yeah. more so to, oh, absolutely. to get your uh, little tea leaves as, as you said, and, this is fun, you know, part and part of part of the fun of winning it's is new territory for if you're like if you your age, it's <laughs> new territory. That is true. That is true. This, this Timberwolves is. team still has conversational rights to talking top seeds, deep playoff runs, mm. things that are not stupid talk as they would be any other year instead of like. Who are you taking in the draft or who can we get from, you know, so-and-so if we trade this guy? You know, all the... the we've the, had way too many dumb March conversations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all of a sudden, we've got real basketball to talk about. Yeah, which that's, that is the dream. Uh, he's Britt Robson. You can follow him on Twitter, at Britt Robson. I'm Dane, at Dane for NBA. Uh, until Monday. He's Britt on me. How I'm feeling, man, I hope it never stops, yeah. Green and hot so you can find me in the crowd, yeah, yeah. Don't let standards ever